we have a bit to get okay welcome again to social distillation the submarine still of the internet where we attempt to drop the bead and pour white lightning straight onto your brain what are we talking about today sam we've got crown of swords so hopefully this will be a thursday release even though it's in the evening uh, uh and, and if you're just watching wheel of time stuff i apologize for last time because for some reason youtube kept stopping the upload at 70 percent, no matter what i did until it didn't so i don't know what i did differently but eventually it did it had to be something to do with the fact that we had to put two things together because 70 percent was exactly about the time stamp when the two videos came together because we had to take a break last time no, it was that Skynet was so mad that we had such a good video talking about sexy time and male-female differences and all these verboten topics. Well, there is that, but at the same time, it's still, it's still, it was unfortunate, and I apologize for that, so if you were waiting around for it, we'll do better next time. So, I've got to get my mind, speaking of mind traps, uh, um, I was... I spent the last half hour uh, helping my daughter with her history homework, trying to help her make sense of things. And they're in 1970s and 80s U.S. politics. So I went down a deep rabbit hole of, well, you can't really call this new because this started in the 1950s. Really, it predates the 1950s. I've got some books on Wendell Wilkie if you want to read those, but that's into the 30s and you probably don't want to go back that far. And so that's what and I was see, doing. You get mad hour. at me when I go back to, you know, 10,000 BC on why we <laughs> behave the way we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 But speaking of mind traps, chapter 25, mind trap is where we left off. Um, you know, I, I will comment here. Mohedian is actually one of my favorite Forsaken. And, and I, I think a major component of that is just that we get so much of her. We get so much of her. She was so fleshed out. Like Rav, Ravin had like, he he had potential, but we don't get any meat on him. He doesn't last. Yeah. As Modian, there, he, Jordan tried to get you to get a little bit of heartstring for him, even though he was a psychopath. But it just, I mean, maybe another book would have done it in that direction. Grendel is close because you get a lot fleshed out giggity with her. <laughs> uh, more later, but yeah. The and, Mandrid and then, is the one I think he fell short on because he was the one that should have been the most fleshed, but he wanted the mystery with it. So he, he, yeah, I think yeah. he bounced back and forth between you, I, you feeling something for the character versus I don't want to reveal what's going to come later. And I was about to say that is I think the problem there is that he wanted the mystery and he gives you in book six and seven, especially is he gives you enough to go, Ooh, Hey, what's going on here? And then he just kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he needed, he needed to drop in just like once or twice a book for just a few pages would have kept that mystery going and, and, and really kind of kept you on the edge of your seat wondering, okay, are we finally going to find, find out what's going on with the Mandarin? And it's no, you get a, you get a, you get a bit of him beginning in, in book five in fires of heaven with the, you know, kind of the mini conspiracy of that small group of forsaken. And then you start to get more of him in six, uh, quite a bit more of him where he's, he seems like he's the driving force in the dark. Um, now that, uh, uh now that a has disappeared, I mean, the Shamail is gone. Um, so he seems like he's the driving force there, especially that, especially that ending scene of, have I not done well, my lord? And and the dark one just laughing, you know, that, that mm -hmm. closing scene of Lord of Chaos. And then you get a little bit more here. He kind of strings you along a little bit here, but even starting here, Demandred starts to disappear. And the Forsaken we see, at least the Forsaken that are driving the action, are Demand or not Demand, uh, Samael and Grendel, especially in their, their disguises kind of um manipulating uh savannah and the and the uh and the Aiel. and the manager's just kind of all right well he's done now mm -hmm. halima is awesome because he does flesh her out quite a bit as well also gave with with the asengar erengar mm -hmm. duality i wish he would have done that 
more with the other one as well because it was a very big point to have them both in the same room at the same time and why they're back and you can kind of guess who they were at this mm-hmm. point uh but at the same time you get a lot more you you kind of only guess who Asengar is because you know who Halama Erengar is or you can figure out who Halama Erengar is mm-hmm. if you had the big white book anyways well and 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 just right at the opening of chapter 25 he's giving he's giving you that again mm-hmm. of um where is it yeah uh the woman named herself Erengar uh, called Malkidian by name. She gave summons to the Pit of Doom and removed the Adam necklace, flinching at pain no woman should have felt. Um, Again, how many times had she done this? Again, Malkidian wove a small gateway in the tent. She skimmed to give herself blah, blah, blah. Okay, so again, he's telling you, just reminding you, because it it is kind it, it's not kind of, it's very weird. And again, freaking series and their destruction of the difference between male and female sides of the source. He has spent six books ingraining in your mind as he pulls you into this world to, to, to make this world feel real. That there is a difference between men and women. So when Arungar... Well, let, does let me. What she does yeah. it doesn't make any sense, and it's let not me be to. fair. Let me be fair to the series, and I, I'm doing this 100 under the understanding that I could be completely wrong, and they're going to fail me, which they probably will. They left it ambiguous that there's a difference in the source. There is the taint. They made that clear, mm-hmm. but from what I understand, the interaction episode between uh Logan and the Aes Sedai they never made it clear that they could see his weaves or there was a similarity there they knew he was pushing on the shield but we know from uh these books that you could feel that anyways so th- that's the only thing they left there so they still left that open to get that right do I think they will? No. But at the same time, I they did leave it open, and uh, I'm I'm sure they did it for that whole mystery to who's the dragon, blah blah blah, for right. people who have never read the books. But at the same time, now that that's revealed and it's clear, they can go the route that there is a difference between the sources of the power. It, there is nothing holding them back on that. It will be silly, and it will make no sense to anyone who's paying attention and thinking and goes, "Well, well wait a other, minute. Then why was there any thought that?" Yeah, other than Tame and the scene with him and the taint, they never showed him actually really using the power other than him breaking through the shield that one time. So now that we have Rand, they can differentiate between the two if they want to, because this is the first introduction we're going to have from a point of view that we should have. Again, I'm giving benefit of the doubt. I'm playing devil's advocate here. And and realistically, if Critical Drinker's right in his interview with uh, Chris Williamson, Hollywood is trying to recorrect, but you were, there's a three-year lag to these things. Mm. Well, now that we know that the new season was being filmed during the time that the recorrection is trying to happen, maybe someone up high said, okay, now we need to get back to the books. We did our thing. We we virtue signaled all we need to do. Now let's get back to the books and make a good series. I'm hoping. Uh, I, I, I am putting my emotional stability into this pot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My, I, I I haven't watched the his, his uh, interview with Williamson yet. It's on my to do list. But my my suspicion though is that no, that that won't happen to some degree. That can't happen. It can't it, happen in the things they nailed in, like it, like it, Swan and Moiraine, lovers, like no, no, things no, like it, that. But the male and female half of the source, they can still salvage. It can't happen intra series, you know. For instance, um, the Rings of Power doubled down on its on its stupidity by um, uh, declaring advertising that the second season is going to be all female directors like anyone cared about that as opposed to the utter garbage that was the series in ter series. So for instance, a, a lot has been made about how much hot garbage there is on um, 
on, on Prime, especially when you look at Wheel of Time, when you look at Rings of Power, and yet then out of nowhere, you'll get Reacher, which was incredibly good. You'll get um, the Terminal List, which was very good. And and I, I, I think it's because the powers that be, the woke powers that be, are paying attention to their babies. They're paying attention to Rings of Power and Wheel of Time. And so something like Reacher or Terminal List is able to kind of slip under the radar because its creative team is focused on quality productivity in much the same way that House of the Dragon was in production for a while, but um, the powers that be were focused on other things. And all that they cared about was give us good Game of Thrones-ness again so that we can get those eyeballs and we can get the, the clicks and the people talking about it again. And they didn't care as much about the the content, I don't think. So in, unless the creative team has changed, I don't see how anything gets better with Wheel of Time Season 2. Well, I'm looking up viewership, and the thing about Rings of Power is it exploded, and Wheel of Time kind of want want. So that, well, that could be it, a big influencer as well. It if ostensibly you're, if you're successful exploded. despite your stupidity, you're going to continue the stupidity. Well, except they <clears throat> seem to have been successful for the first episode, and then took a hard nosedive. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because all of the million, hundreds of millions of Wheel of Time fans tuned in, and then said, "Yeah, they, they didn't." No, I mean, they didn't I mean, have Rings of mind. Power. The Rings of Power oh. supposedly had this huge premiere, and then they didn't really tout any numbers after that. Uh, I'm looking at overall streaming, and it was still quite a bit more. It also depends on who. But you look House at. of Dragon did better, which is great because House of Dragon was actually good. Sure for less than half per episode budget mm -hmm. oh yeah house of dragon you could see the money saving things but they did they made it work which again jordan's over overpowering of armies and stuff is going to play against that because i would like to see uh last kingdom numbers you know where there's like a hundred guys going at another yeah. hundred guys on the field you know that that's more realistic what which which worked for Last Kingdom because that was the size of the big battles in that era, mm -hmm. Be because the the world was so upended after the fall of their own empire that nation states, what nation states there were, couldn't field large numbers. They just couldn't. So a major battle, like the the opening battle of that second, no wait, that was Vikings. The opening battle of the second season of Vikings. That was a great illustration. That, that was a such a good show. Big battle. Yeah. So look at that. And you have 30 to 50 people on each side. Mm -hmm. And that was a big battle. That's how it played out. And so I, when, when we sat around as, as college nerds talking about this, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I thought that if it came to the screen, that Wheel of Time should be animated. Because there's so mm -hmm. much in here that is just going to be very difficult to... Didn't they attempt that at one point? And it didn't take off? I don't know. I know there were graphic novels, and I thought they were successful, but I don't know. Um, the, I know the ones I read, the new spring graphic novels were very good. Um, I know there have been a couple... The, the rights have bounced around a few times um, and, and no one was able to really get it going until Amazon because they have ludicrous buttloads of cash. And so mm -hmm. they were able to, to put money into it, even with uh, the hiccup of the uh, uh, unknown virus of unspecified origin. Even with that, they were able to put buttloads of cash into it and get it going. Um, but even, even then... I mean, go go back to our preview episode, and one of my comments, and you agreed, was it looks cheap. 
one of my first mm-hmm. thoughts looking at uh, a, a good chunk of the the trailer for the first season and i thought oh, the, the trollocks were bad the cheap. the ways were the worst it was a just, warehouse it was just a fucking the, dark warehouse is what it was gate, and you can tell the gate into the ways looked cheap it's like wow that looks like a big piece of paper mache that looks like the first couple of seasons of of star trek next generation where paper mache rocks are falling on people it's like wow that that looks good it it was bad um and this is another one of those this, this uh this chapter is is another one of those um you know there there there's almost a lovecraftian esque feel to it in that she's literally in another world she's literally outside of the world she's outside of time she's in like this uh demi plane this sub dimension um so and and she so it there there's a there's a an unreal essence to it of how do you do that and make it look real whereas if it was animated it would be easier to um to make something surreal and have it work that's the thing if you the money they're putting into this the graphic uh design the uh the, the computer graphics should be good enough to do this it should give an animated feel to it i mean i'm not talking like well, you know, 1990 or, or freaking hercules from the 1980s with lou ferrigno with the 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 beast coming in you know i'm t- some show you can have cg that is virtually real i don't recommend having mm-hmm. a full virtual person because that would look unreal but the weaves and, and uh things like that you the, can do the clips from she hulk i saw it made me laugh and 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 one of the criticisms from people i watch like nerdrotic and critical drinker and stuff they said that it looked like a ps2 game and i thought no it doesn't the the cutscenes from Final Fantasy X looked better than the CG in She Hulk. Mm-hmm. I, there's an element of time here that I think is the big deal. The the technology is there. It's do you give the creative team enough time to do it? Well, we they were supposed to have the new season last December, so we're giving them time. But at the same time, I would take a little bit of cruddy CG. If the story was right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that would uh, be fine. You, you, just like you ex- accepted that it could be an animated TV show, I would take a little bit of, oh, I can tell that CG, but the story is right. Go back to the paper mache rocks from Star Trek Next Generation. There mm-hmm. are, you know, there are some cheesy effects through all seven seasons, but especially once you start about the third season. The episodes, the storylines are good enough. You don't care. I I think the the biggest example of this for a lot of us nerds is Babylon Five. Those effects were hilarious. I was going to say Evil Dead, but or Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness. <laughs> you don't care. You don't care that it's dorky. It leans into the dorkiness. Um, so that that's on one side because Army of Darkness or, leans or, into the dorkiness. Or speaking of Hercules, the Kevin Sorbo. Hercules or Xena. It was campy. It was semi low budget, but we loved it because it, it, it played to the character. It played to the, if the... you go one way or another, so long as you are authentic one way or another, there's a great meme mm-hmm. that I've seen going around that, um, the reason, uh, the Muppet Christmas Carol is so good. And this I know for sure is true because I've heard Michael Caine talk about this, that he would only do it if he could do it legitimately. It's the Muppet Christmas Carol is so good because Michael Caine is playing it like, like it's a stage play, like it's the most serious piece of Dickens. And it's just, there happen to be Muppets around him. So he plays it a hundred percent serious. On the other hand, you have Muppet Treasure Island, where you have Tim Curry, who, so Michael Caine is so good, and that movie is so good, because he treats all the Muppets like uh, like they are uh, colleagues, like they are other actors. Tim Curry acts as if he's one of the Muppets. (laughs) 
So that's why that one is so good. So you got to go one way or the other. We probably should get back to the book, though. We probably should get back to the book. Okay. Um, this chapter, there's a whole bunch of... Um, it's, it's basically one big flashback. And... Um, you you get the uh the dangers of serving the bad guys yeah. of <laughs> um this is the secretary being called into stalin's office you don't know if he just feel like feels like shooting somebody today have you watched death of stalin it's on my to-do list and i i keep forgetting to get I around not, to it no. and it's it's maybe we should both watch it and then do an episode on it because that is, in a lot of ways, that's that just jumps into my mind here in this scene of the what one of the one of one of the scenes in the Death of Stalin that I know for a fact is real is a forty-five minute standing ovation because everyone was scared to death to be the first one to stop clapping. <laughs> that's what you got here, and uh, and then you have. Uh, more setup and payoff we've mentioned this before but i think this is a great chapter be, to to illustrate it with the mind trap the course sova or whatever you call it uh and then i think there's a there's a an old tongue world word for the kind of bubble of reality that she was floating in and he doesn't give you a lot of exposition of what that is he he gives you you have to infer some of it. He explains, but a lot of it you have to infer because it's from her point of view and she's not going to explain to herself what these things are. Cause she knows what they are. Mm -hmm. She's thinking about the effects of them. And, and so you get the Holy crap because you get it. You feel it through her. Uh, and then we get, I, I believe this is, where is it? So Shidar Heron is, um, <laughs> um, so this is another thing that was on the forums of uh for some reason people had this bizarre obsession with uh <clears throat> exactly how much attention Shidar Heron gave gave Malkidian. Mm. And it's another one of the things that he just kind of figs and mice. It just he leaves it to your imagination of, of mm -hmm. how, how how dark do you want to get? Because considering the the pitch blackness of the dark one, you can't get more dark. So however however crazy your imagination is going to go, perfect. So that that's why he leaves it open. And then we get, I believe this is the first time we've seen him, isn't it? Uh. Shidar Heron? No, not Shidar Heron. The, oh, Moradin. The, the person who shows up after Shidar Heron finally leaves Mogidian alone. Mm -hmm. um, yes, this, I believe, is the first time. Other than I think he's the one stalking uh, Samael and Grindel. It is. You, you can infer that that's what's going on because he wields the true power. The true mm -hmm. power. And... Um, he uh he thinks like a person because you get his point of view you can safely assume that's not shidar heron mm -hmm. which in the original when you're reading semile and grendel you assume it's shidar heron because there's no one else it could be but then you get this new character here and you're like oh oh that's who it was at least i went there originally not just on a yes. reread yeah. yes yeah um, so we, we have, we have a new player, um, 
because the only other option would have been Demandred. Uh, so page 533 down at the bottom, we get uh, Mulcadian kind of evaluating him. Suddenly it occurred to her that this fellow knew a great deal for a friend of the dark, especially one not many years past 20. Um, so Mulcadian can't quite see past that. You're supposed to be able to infer that because Mulcadian is a a slave to her biases, a slave to her assumptions. Mm -hmm. So to her, this is simply a, a high, a high positioned friend of the dark, dark friend. You should be able to infer that there's something more going on here because of the amount of power that he's wielding. Um, and then to your point of of inferring who the the lurker the watcher was is uh so 534 mohidian gas not for the name any fool could call himself death but a tiny black fleck just large enough to see floated straight across one of those blue eyes and then across the other in the same line this morden had tapped into the true power and more than once much more so again a major clue that by the end of this chapter, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say just in case there is anyone's reading for the first time and doesn't know, but it's a safe, it's a safe bet who this is mm -hmm. based, based on how much power, both lowercase P and capital P true power that he wields, that there aren't a lot of mortals. There aren't a lot of humans who would be, granted this level of access or who would be willing to even when granted that's another major component that you that you get that so you can't tap into the true power without the explicit permission of the dark one because it's him it's his essence basically that's what you're drawing but in much the same way that there was no official truce but even the Forsaken, even the dark side was hesitant to use Balefire because of its the ripple effects is they were hesitant to use the true power unless they really needed to because, you know, he, he's not very explicit here, but it's it's like the taint only worse, only different in in what it does to you. And for the Forsaken, all the ones we get to know anyway, except for one, they have a, a, a very human reason for turning to the dark. Mm -hmm. And so they, they don't want to lose themselves because the self, with a capital S, is all that matters. They, they are all ultra-narcissists to some degree or another, along with other things along with other negative traits. Well, and they, they, for some reason, still believe they can get to that top position and win the day without him actually being free. Mm -hmm. Where the, the, the one that got it is, uh, is clear. Um, and then we move on to, um, I mean, it can't it can't be an accident that Mulcahyian's chapter is is then uh, followed by Morgase and what's happening to her. Mm -hmm. That is very similar, not not as terrible, because it's after all only being perpetrated by humans, but shockingly similar. Um with what is happening here. And again, he, he leaves much of it to your imagination, but uh, it's, it's a little easier to read between the lines here, because again, you're talking about people. So you, you can understand those mm -hmm. motives easier than existential darkness. Um, it It is a little frustrating to me knowing where this storyline ends up because this 
could and should be a very impactful chapter um, with, with what we know of Morgase from Elaine's point of view. With what, so much of what we know of Morgase comes from Elaine, and you're supposed to like Elaine, she's supposed to be sympathetic. And then when you see the horrible ordeal Morgase is having to go through here, it should be really impactful. Except she's kind of an obnoxious brat. And then the storyline becomes incredibly tedious. So it. Um, yeah, I don't want to get too deep into it because we've talked about this kind of stuff before, but in the first couple of ch pages here, you get, uh, you get women sniping at each other, which is probably one of the reasons Jordan needs to be canceled now. <laughs> um, but if I can forget about where the storyline goes that I don't like, you you can see what's happening here. I just wish uh, he'd given you a Jordan had given you a little more because he gives you hints of this, but then you don't see it enough. Which is on page five thirty nine, um, Brienne. Mm -hmm. So he hints early on when you first meet her, he hints that Brienne is possibly a lower nobility, possibly Carheenan who fell on hard times because of the civil war and all the upheaval going on there. And that Lamguin took her in and is her protector. Right. So that's why she's so devoted to him. So, you can kind of see where she's coming from when she kind of snipes at Morgus here. Lenny and I drape linen over their eyes for you, Brienne sneered, pulling her hand away and flinging it back at her. If I could save Lamguin, I would let him know, know you for the bleeding sheep you are. He sees the light made flesh in you. I see a woman without courage to accept the day. I will not let you destroy him with your cowardice. Morgus is utterly indignant here, but... Jordan has hinted that Brienne has been through what Morgase is going through and perhaps worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and when you think about Karin politics, it, it's not a, it's not a far throw. Well, uh, I, I'm drawing a blank on the author's name. There's a great series called the black company. Um, it's a fantasy series. It's it's a bit bizarre because it's a very different kind of fantasy than most than your other kind of Tolkien esque things. I'm drawing a blank on the author's name. Um, it is very brutal in its depiction of um, medieval warfare. That and and not even. Uh okay, it, it go watch the last Rambo movie, not the last last one. I, I pretend that one doesn't exist, but the Rambo, the one that takes place in um Myanmar, where there has been a 20, 30 year civil war now. And just watch the opening 10 minutes of that. Humanity at its base, with no inhibitions, is incredibly brutal. When law and order and institutions and society and the the governing expectations of, of societal morals and ethics break down, men turn into animals. Spoken like a true conservative. This is why I use lions as an analogy so often. You the the male lion, new male lions come in if the the old male is not strong enough to defend his pride, 
the new male or males, kill him, then kill all of his offspring, and then have their way with his women. That is human history since before recorded time. Uh, no, because we can even go to, we don't even have to go all the way up the hierarchy to humans. We can go to just primates like baboons, chimpanzees, bonobos. The true alpha males are great at forming coalitions. And so when the new males come in, they don't just come in and destroy the alpha male because he has formed a coalition of his peeps. Mm -hmm. We we have a little bit more frontal cortex than a lion. Lion li lion's a feline. It's different, it's somewhat the same, but it is different. And, and humans will naturally, as far as males, form hierarchies. This is something that's cancelable, but I don't know why because it actually flies in the face of the brutality that you're talking about. We will form hierarchies that stabilize the system. There might be a growing pain if something up uh, upends the, the the previous hierarchy, but it's still going to be there. It's not going to be this free for all that some of Hollywood or whatever documentary you're speaking of will uh, wants to put in your to 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 actually tout the rule of law. The rule of law it, is important. It, it, but it won't is not be everything. that long term. So, like, for instance, one of our nerdy... Well, it, it would be in small-scale operations. The problem, what, what we talk about on the other issues is the United States is 330 million people. It's not a small-scale operation All where right. everybody knows everybody else's reputation. Uh, another, another historical analogy would be the 30 Years' War. That was... 30 years of an orgy of death and rape and pillage. Well, there's a, there's another and... phenomenon in under the surface there too, though. We've got an us versus them that was formed to start the war to begin with. <laughs> and when there's a, when there's a them, we tend, we do tend to go to our baser instincts. When that, it's all us, there's a difference. That developed as the war dragged on. It, th that us versus them became entrenched and so it became expected that if you if your city was besieged and you did not pay them off they were going to come in and they were going to rape and pillage and kill that's what men would do when 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 all the bounds of society have fallen down now it doesn't stay that way forever to your point and they're they're could and would be and might be some order imposed from on high but when the dam bursts there's going to be a flood before the water settles well it also depends on who's on high yeah if you've got some psychopath that managed to claw his way to the top in a social society you're going to have a different outcome than if you have a benevolent narcissist or, I'm, I'm not i'm not so delusional yeah. that you're not going to have some cluster or, be at the top or but... or a weakling who couldn't control people when things start to get out of hand there are mm -hmm. lots of examples of that yeah yeah all right back to the book to, to the point jordan is hinting at the very very dark world of history that he doesn't want to go too in depth in because that would really get gross and kind of be a downer. He wants this to be a more epic fantasy tale. Well, but he's it, hinting that it's there. Yeah, you're talking about baser instincts, and we're talking also about a power dynamic here. And Valda is uh, uh, creating a, syst a, a, a system of dominance over Morgase. And what better way than to do that? You know, uh, Asunawa wanted to do it with pain. Mm -hmm. Although what he gives her an out with that, well, he can't offer her other pain, right? So he offers her dominance in the in the uh, the form of I am going to have my way with you. China uses rape as an official means of torture. Mm. Yeah, that still happens today. Um, so 
Only with women, I'm assuming, because <laughs> death by snoo snoo, a lot of men would take. I'm I'm not. I mean, you've seen Pulp Fiction. It well, unless it's male on male rape. There's a that that would. Have you ever watched the Outlander series? No. Spoiler alert for anybody in the audience. Male rape has something to do with it, but because of that, it actually has one of the most impactful season finales that I have ever watched in a show. And it's kind of a chick flick. It's a it's a female fantasy novel on screen, but it was very enthralling and by the end of it because of this dynamic it was it was disturbing and impactful so there's my recommendation for those looking for i I had heard that it is a it is a chick flick um at its core but has enough um has enough to appeal to male audiences as well well no it's a romance novel which means that the the protagonist male is actually a manly man versus twilight or mm. or something along those lines. Mm. So it, it the first season at least is like that. The second season kind of goes more to the the female empowerment route. But uh the first season is worth a watch for anybody in the off- audience. Um so moving along here, I, I will point out though on the positive side, the more positive side that halfway through the chapter here um around the 540 something ish mark uh yeah 548 ish um morgase and suroth that interaction is really good because that's morgase in her element that suroth is putting on a show and morgase is savvy enough to recognize that it's a not not only recognize that suroth is putting on a show but read a lot of the subtext, read a lot of the things that maybe read the things that Suroth wants to wants Morgase to understand without saying it out loud, but also see some of the things that Suroth doesn't necessarily want her to, to see. Um, and then we get to the irrevocable words and then we move on. Okay. Um, how much time do we want to spend on chapter twenty-seven? I, I think we'll probably spend more time there when we actually get to um parent storyline in depth. Um. With with him with this small group that's been sent out to Geldan to try mm. and fix that mess there. Um, yeah, unfortunately, but, this is the the beginning of the annoying part of Perrin's storyline. And you see it right from the beginning because he's thinking about it with the why the bloody hell did you have to send Perlin here, Rand? You know, and that's going to cause problems. But not just that for the personal problem, but then you have the political problems of he has these disparate groups that he has to keep together. None of them really like each other. None of them fully trust each other. And he's stuck smack dab in the middle of it all. And on top of that, the, the opening here, the kind of the flashback is kind of what I'd been hinting at with Perrin and Rand's interaction with, there's an element of Perrin's not entirely sure that Rand was acting there. Mm-hmm. He's not sure that he wasn't on the verge of accidentally killing Perrin because Perrin had struck such a nerve. Um, which is worrying to Perrin both one, because there's a part of him that says, What what the hell did they do to you? But also, who are you? Because this isn't my best friend, practically one of my, you know the brother I didn't have you and Matt are practically the the brothers I didn't have growing up. And now I'm not sure who you are. Well, and this is, this is where, uh, I don't know how much of it Jordan was doing on purpose or not, but where Matt was a much better companion for Rand because Matt would tell him what he thought and be honest with him. 
but he was so fluid with it that he didn't piss Rand off to the point of violence where Perrin Perrin is so conscientious that he has to make and solve the puzzle that it has to be formed into the, 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 the steel he wants it to be that he he's going to just basically be a hammer in Rand's face. And Rand does not respond well to that. Rand is a, a stubborn, stubborn two rivers folk. He does not respond well to that at all. Fael wants it. That's why Perrin and Fael are so good together because Fael wants that reaction. But Rand, it's it's the 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 best thing to make him dig in his heels, which in this case it could kill you. Where Matt would just be like, "Well, you you're, you're fucking doing stupid shit again," but I'll go over here. Okay. Just he, want you to he, know that you know? He, he would say something snarky, yeah, and then he, you know, that Perrin is f- for all that he is the gentle giant because he was always scared to roughhouse too much because he was way bigger than all the other kids from an early age, but he's still a giant, so when he is confrontational, he, he's also very direct, he's very simplistic and not in a negative way i just mean he's very simplistic and so if he's going to flex he's going to flex well Um, he's he's an embodiment of if you're a hammer everything's a nail right we're at so so you know he he doesn't believe in always picking up the hammer but when he believes it's time for the hammer he pounds as hard as he can whereas matt's flex is a deflection Mm -hmm. so that's chapter 27. All right, let's pause for a second so I can go find a cough drop because my throat is hurting. And we'll see how far we can get here. All right, we will pause for a station identification. All right, so flipping ahead, I got my chapters discombobulated and out of order. I, th- I thought we were going to get to uh, Rand and his um, aftermath with his uh, liaison with men, but we're not there yet. And first, we have some more Matt. And um, appropriately enough, it uh, it has to do with a similar situation, only kind of turned on its head. Um, chapter 28, Bread and Cheese, where uh, Matt is trying to uh, find something to eat. But the kitchen staff has been told to starve him out until uh, until he, he gives an Mama invitation. One, yeah. Until he accepts an invitation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where is it? Uh, p- page five eighty four. Uh, back in his rooms in the palace, he found a note, an invitation of sorts, elegantly lettered on thick white paper that smelled like a garden of flowers. My little rabbit, I expect to have you for dinner tonight in my apartments. Ahem. Uh. And then Elaine and Nynaeve enter the picture, and they're being themselves. Uh. Please, Elaine said, smiling. Almost. I was about to read that. <laughs> did not paint her. You must put your best foot forward with the queen. Don't be nervous. You'll enjoy an evening with her. Just he don't needs to put do something in front of his foot, her. though. <laughs> <laughs> Nynaeve muttered there was no doubt with her that being civil hurt her brows drew down in concentration her jaw tightened and her hands trembled to pull at her braid be accommodating for once in your I mean to say remember she's a decent woman and don't try any of your light you know what I mean nervous ha decent woman ha <laughs> uh, uh. see we, we did the cross sex mind reading last time we have the cross culture mind reading this time they're they're expecting her to be like them. Yeah. Uh there's also which yeah. which is actually a little bit ironic because when they're in a similar situation, they're more like Thailand than not. It's and just about yeah, who's in front of you. That yeah. is a uh that is a a a uh foreshadowing for what is to come next time when we talk about uh, well, and even about even way in the future with Elaine, the way farther she with Elaine. Yeah. But going backwards, there is, you know, let's go ahead and get ourselves canceled again. 
uh, because one of the things I mentioned when we were talking about Rand and Min was Mama Needs It Bad. And that's what's going on here, just in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. Well, but Mama's also a mama already. She's not... uh, Women's mate selection changes after a certain age because they're no longer looking for someone to have babies with. They're looking for someone to take care of them and their babies. And that's... That's kind of where the cougar ph- phenomenon comes from. And, yeah, as we and, as as we get to our sexy time with Sam episodes about why women cheat and all of these things, it's different with younger versus older women. Older women are they're they're no longer fertile to most degree to 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 uh, practical degree, and if they're post menopause, then to to no degree. But they also have considerations survival. And their children's survival. And you just brought up lions and infanticide. Well, what better for your children to survive if you were to convince a viable young male to protect you and your family using the things that are at your disposal? And it manifests differently. It manifests as feelings of, I'm very attracted to this person. I'm very forceful towards this person because he's younger than me. Blah, 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 blah. It manifests in all these ways. But the strategy is still the same. She is looking for it, this. If she was still married, this would be a mate switch. But she's not still married. She's she is looking for the youth protector. At this point, she she's also <laughs> so. There's also an element of um. I believe uh, I believe it was Charlie Sheen who so eloquently said, "You don't pay a hooker for sex; you pay her to leave." So she's the queen. All right, she could have anyone she wants if all she wanted was the physical. But there's an additional element there that he is someone outside of the political sphere. He is someone who could could also be an ally in her political sphere. He ticks a lot of boxes here. This isn't just... The physical, that's the surface level. And Jordan does a good job of writing out the surface level of clearly there is a, a physical thing going on here, mm-hmm. but there's more but the to physical it. manifests because of all those other things. Mm. That's that's the thing. That, that, that's the problem. That's the problem people have with desire is we like to think of it as something that's completely our decision. But there are a lot of things under the surface that are bubbling up. And he leads an army. He's roguish. He obviously fights well. He is probably attractive, as we see with his interactions with all the other women in the in the series. So all of, he stands up to Aes Sedai, which is a problem for her. He he's it, he, Tavarin, i.e., in our world, uh, he made some some big bets and hit it big in the stock market. He's got a lucky streak going in the stock market. He right? has all of these things that are protective for her. In in the scenario she's in now, now obviously that changes as the books goes on, but in the scenario she's in now, he is a lot of things protective for her. And and re- in reality, in the future, they would still be too, had had everything worked out differently. But he is he is everything she needs to solidify her position. Remember what Tom says about her not being weak, mm-hmm. but look at the situation she's in. He is beneficial for her in that situation and she's attractive and vigorous and we get a hints of how it's not altogether unpleasant for him. So (laughs) to put it nicely, so uh, she's using the thing that she knows she has. And it's again, subconsciously, she's not doing this as, as like playing chess. She's doing this because she's, self-protecting as well for her and Beslin. But at the same time, it makes for a great story. (laughs) And I don't feel too bad for him here. And there, again, we're not allowed to say this. And I, was this in our wheel of time talk or when we were talking? um, No, I think this was last Tuesday or the Tuesday before where we were talking about Baloo and Williamson. And 
men and women are different. We're not allowed to say that. And including how you experience the sex act is different, which means that there, uh, there comes a point in this kind of ch chase where, where Matt is thinking, you know, something to the effect of if, if the shoe was on the other foot, then the women, Nine even Elaine would be indignant and they would be, but it would be different. It would be like we saw in the the first few chapters of uh, the Shadow Rising, where he's playing cards, and one of the young lordlings, who I think ends up being in the band, um, set, tells Matt that he he has to have Rand, you know, redo this proclamation. Uh, Are about you thinking of uh, he he showed up in Carhine when Rand and the oh, Aiel got yeah. there. But he's he he doesn't end up in the band. I thought he I thought it I thought it was a Dorian and I thought he ended a up Dorian. Does a Dorian end up in the band? I'm gonna have to look that up. Anyway, yeah. um, but Matt snarkily said, "Yeah, it would be terrible if some uh farmer brought you before a magistrate because you had your way with his daughter." And Matt was absolutely serious even though he was being snarky and of course the drunken lordling didn't get it yeah that would be terrible i'm allowed to have my way with the farmer's daughter it's different with a man it is more physical what you see here from tylen is more mental it is a game of seduction and yeah, there is a twinge of coercion there, but I I think it's fair to say, especially how things play out at least through this book, and then you know more later, I think it's fair to say that if Matt at any point had put her foot down, or had put his foot down and said, no, you know, in the same way that the farmer's daughter would have tried to fend off Adorian, that she would have said, oh. This isn't the game I thought it was. Because it's different. Um, is it it, it it could be not different if she had her guards hold him down or something. Yes. But it, at the end of the day, in his mind, he knows even with the marriage knife, he could have taken it from her and he could have gotten away I was about to point that out i was yeah. trying to remember where she pulls the knife on him and yeah. i think it's in this chapter no, i think it's the next chapter um yeah. when but, but at the end of the day because not only is he bigger and stronger but he is he's matt he's probably the best fighter in the series maybe next to gallat or land as being better than him other than that i can't think of anybody else but uh yeah so he could have gotten out of the physical part of the situation at any time, but he didn't. Having been in a relationship like this at one point, I get it. It's it, it, it's fiery at times, and you know you should get out, but you still... Here it is. Yeah, this is what I was it. looking for. So so the bottom of 596. So this is the, the next chapter where... Uh... Uh, she sends one of her ladies in waiting basically uh, off with Oliver so that he can, so he can't use the child as a shield. Which is a female move, but we're not supposed to point that out either. Um, yeah, very much. So. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, remember Matt's high in agreeableness, so he uh -huh. is going to try to do things that make people not put him in a spot to say no. And that's using child as a, a shield because most women are high in agreeable agreeableness. Yeah. All he had on was the fox head medallion on its cord. Much good that had done. And the black scarf tied around his neck, a ribbon on her present. The blood bloody woman had called it. He rolled over and snatched his silver mounted pipe and tobacco pouch from the small table on the other side from her uh, blah, blah, blah. You should not flounce, duckling, and you shouldn't pounce. She yanked her dagger from where it was driven into the bedpost beside her barrage knife, examining the point before sheathing it. What is the matter? You know you enjoyed yourself as much as I did, and I, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, so this is this <laughs> is the money quote though. Uh, the top of five ninety seven. It isn't natural. He burst out, yanking the pipe stem from between his teeth. I'm the one who's supposed to do the chasing. <laughs> so it's yes, there was an element of coercion to it, but it was a chase. The problem with Matt, and he knows it. This is just him in a moment of honest self-reflection, blurting out what he suddenly realizes is the truth. That the real problem here is that unlike, say, Kiara, the the uh, the waitress in the in the wandering woman, he's supposed to, you know, flip her the coin and give her a wink and a smile and teach her a new dance and all that. He's supposed to do the chasing. It's not supposed to work that way. And that's that's the real crux of this chapter is, well, it's different here. <laughs> well, and again, this is where we get the term cougar. Cougars are hunters. And it's been attached to slightly older women that have already done the thing that they need to do as young women, which is have children. Mm. Oh, gosh, I said that. Don't clip that. That's not exactly how I meant to say it, but done the thing that that... Uh, evolutionarily they would have done which is have children and now they're searching for something else and that something else is needed in a young successful uh competent male and they're very good at identifying that by the way they're not like young women that are going to fall for the narcissist they're going to find the actual competent young men which if you are a cool get always in the friend zone dude date older date older this is my advice to you you will be happy trust me and then when you're older and and you've you've been successful then you find the younger so there there's your there's your order from uh sexy time with sam but uh you're welcome uh but yeah this is where she is she's she is the prototypical cougar she is a power woman who doesn't need a man for resources she needs a man for all the other things men do Sorry to rant there, but no, that that is. And Matt can't see that because he comes from a very different world. That this yeah, because he comes from a world where you start with the traditional man, woman, resources, babies, and then you develop that that uh, partnership relationship all the way till you die. And, it, and it, there is no threat to that. That's the key here. She has threat to her safety. She has threat to all these things. In the two rivers, there is no threat to the female that he's going to wander off and go somewhere else or someone else is going to come in and harm them. And... He doesn't... You know, I'm remembering this connecting way back to a scene in the great hunt so so 598 halfway down um he nearly wept again he gave women presents um because she gave him somebody to go buy something nice because she was going to buy and buy him an earring but didn't know if he had his ears pierced so uh remember back when they go to the steading and uh and Loyal is talking about how Ogier marriages are arranged by the mothers. And the male doesn't have a say in it. That when when the two mothers get together and they decide this is this is the match, okay, you're getting married. And um Matt is snickering and laughing, and Rand is going, I'm not so sure that it's not that different where we come from. And he's thinking about how as he started to become a teenager, he started spending more and more time with Egwene. And the only other girls who would dance with him were good friends of Egwene. And Egwene's mother and his father used to spend lots of time talking with each other while they were in town, while he was in town spending time with Egwene. It's similar, it just is different in its example. And 
and and you kind of get that at the very end of this chapter, which is a good laugh, but that um the female part of it is more subdued it's 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 more in the background it's not that uh it's not important it's just that it is handled in a different way it's not proper in much the same way that matt is thinking i'm the one who's supposed to do the chasing in Marin Alvera's way of thinking, it wouldn't be proper for Egwene to do the chasing. It wouldn't be proper for me well, to say something out loud in public. So I'm going to pull Tam aside and we're going to have a little chat. Matt is correct with women his age. That's the difference. Tylen is what? At least, at least 15 years older, maybe 20. Because she has Beslin, who is a little younger than he is, because he's Elaine's age. Uh, so I'm assuming somewhere around, she would have had Beslin around the age Matt is right now. So mm -hmm. she's at least 17, 18 years older than he is. With women his age, well, here uh, we'll go into to numbers. 80% of women think the man should approach first in dating. But 50% of men don't approach women because they think they'll be creepy. So we have a little bit of a mismatch in, in uh, again, cross-sex mind, mind reading there. So, But 80% of women think men should approach first in the dating scene, which means young. But when we talk older women, they're aggressive. They're very aggressive. Trust me, they are very aggressive. Uh because they've they're they're past that it's it's a different motive when the motive changes the the behavior changes you, you also have a very different um world view when you have urban versus rural this is true as well yeah like i said the danger is different so in the two rivers there is no danger of someone spou uh, uh, poaching your spouse there is no danger of you being left without your house and your children and your resources and someone coming along and killing your children. In Ibu Dar, a little bit different because there's duels. She's royalty, so people are after her position and power all the time. So there, it's it's a little it's it's quite a different situation. Mm -hmm. and, and in a more in in a rural setting where you have <clears throat> what's the number that you can really only know there's like a number you're talking about dunbar's number dunbar's number 150 acquaintances the the average the average tribe in a hunter hunter gatherer situation is about 150 but he actually i saw further on on his work uh just recently even in those 150 uh population tribes there are sec or there are kind of uh subsections of 50 and any more than 50 you have increased rates of homicide so not just it goes up linearly but it goes up in a upward curve so any more than 50 so you see family groups and or 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 kin groups kind of form together in that but uh as far as close kin you got five and I, and of course, variation one or another, I could say minus six, but I tend to be a little bit more feminine in my relationship style. Uh, whereas most guys would probably be around four, four or five. And then as far as I could call this person, if I needed something 15, so it's five, 15, 150. And then after that, we need those things you were talking about, like laws and, and, uh, and judicial bodies to kind of keep everybody together because it just uh -huh. falls apart otherwise. Well, we we got we got a, a nice uh, pastoral view of of Matt's world at the very beginning of the series because there was a there were there were some in, mentions as they're going into the uh, Emmons Field about how Tam is a widower. Well, you have a rural setting. You you have a smaller collection, a smaller group of people. So it's easier for Marin Alvera to say, 
hey, what about widow so-and-so or widow so-and-so, Tam? You've been a widower too long. You need you need a woman. So so to go back to our point of Tylen being the aggressor, when it came to widow so-and-so, da 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 the female was the aggressor through Marin versus Tam going out and approaching these women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because, it, it again, the goal is different. It's not about procreation anymore. It's about companionship and protection at that point. And when it, when it, when it switches those roles, the female becomes the aggressor. Mm -hmm. Especially since she's probably lost her youth and the initial I'm going to approach that woman because she's hot is gone. Where is it? Ah, t -t 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 -t. That might get us canceled, but it's the truth. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be injecting the most toxic chemical to humanity into our skins to look younger. Botox. Mm -hmm. Botulism um, is one of the most toxic things in the world, and we inject it in our skin to look younger. Go, this is why I I freeze more than I can. Because go go read up on home canning and start seeing the warnings about botulism and you will freak yourself out and go, you know what? Maybe I'll just put this in a freezer Ziploc and freeze it. Yeah, except, dude, you can smell it. You can also tell just by the, if you've got a yeah. good seal or not. If you don't have a good seal, then it's... And, and vinegar is a wonderful thing, too. Oh, that's why it's easy if you pickle something because then you don't have to worry quite as much because the pickling solution. Anyway, page 606. So, so this is where, this is where, where this is where these two chapters just culminate because it, in, in a, in a, uh, a hilarious comedy of errors kind of thing here, um, Matt suddenly realizes that not only does everybody know, but Beslin, this guy who's just a few years younger than him, approves. Not only does he know he approves. What do you mean? He said hoarsely. Beslin's head whipped around in a wide-eyed surprise. Why, her choosing you for her pretty, of course. Why is your face so red? Are you angry? What? Suddenly he slapped his forehead and laughed. You think I will be angry? Forgive me. I forget you're an outlander. Matt, she's my mother, not my wife. Father died ten years ago, and she has always claimed to be too busy. I am just glad she chose someone I like. <laughs> Where are you going? And he goes, wandering off in a stupefied haze, which is how the tavernist works, because he's not trying. <laughs> he just <laughs> wanders off in a stupefied haze. There's also some great stuff in the in that chapter of uh because it's the festival of of birds, so there's some mostly naked Birgit uh yeah. Greening, so which which, which I hope which, they take advantage of in the series because which, which we talked about last time yeah. quite a bit, so we can we can skip over that. But it's it's good stuff, it's fun stuff. But the 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 crux of these two chapters is Matt being chased and being indignant because he's supposed to do the chasing. And uh, I don't have any spoileriness, but I I was looking at the comments and. This actually uh, dovetails nicely with, there's only two two comments. Um, Scott uh, mentioned the bale fire that we talked about last time mm -hmm. when she uses it in the Dragon Reborn. And then, yeah, and um, from what I read from that comment, he, 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 he tend, it seems he writes the comments as he's going. He mm -hmm. didn't get to the end of the whole conversation mm -hmm. before, before he, uh, he made that one. Cause we, we kind of wrapped it up with that thought. But uh, this is a good point. And I, I'm not I can't remember if we've made this point or not, but it's, it's it's a really important point that Elaine doesn't actually know Matt. And it it seems like she should, because we we get the feeling that there was a fair bit of time spent in the stone, but But she was canoodling with Rand. The whole he, time. She was canoodling with Rand and he was playing cards. And mm -hmm. you know, stealing. I mean, acquiring the money for, of young lordlings. Well, so, and he he also talks about how he was going around the town trying to, to find a, an excuse to leave, mm -hmm. pretty much most of the time. So, so really, she doesn't really know him. So, what she knows is from Matt and Egwene. Mm -hmm. So, nine even Egwene. 
and I need an Egwene. <laughs> so when when in a, a little bit, well, we can go into it more in a few chapters when when uh when when he finally tells them what's going on between him and Tylen, and uh they're uh chagrined, shall we say. And and Elaine seems to have a genuine turn when it comes to Matt of, oh, it would seem I've misjudged you. Whereas Nynaeve is gritting her teeth not to laugh because in her mind, because of how she negatively she views Matt, she sees this as comeuppance. Yeah. The, the, to, to her, this is simply, you know, turnabout is fair play. Uh, uh, but You know what, Elaine, though? If that's the worst for my behavior that uh, we'll take it uh but that that revelation lets elaine finally kind of see who matt really is and it's that he he chases he he doesn't you know, conquer that's not what he's doing he's yeah. not out to conquer like like your typical you know uber narcissistic lordling who feels that this is his your dude. andrew tates of the world yeah it the chase is the fun the the seduction is the fun it's can i uh go back to the scene where he's teaching uh the uh the wait the waitress girl in uh in camelin he's teaching her that new dance the dance from one of his memories right and it's he's trying to get her to smile. He's trying to get her to laugh, okay? Because to to him, that's a win. Which is funny because he's he's what is he called by the dark friends in the in in the three when they showed the three of them mm -hmm. in the uh, the social hour, the dark friends social hour. What was he labeled as? Trickster is one of the names they use. I don't remember if that was the one the gambler. they used then. Gambler. The gambler. We can go back to and I'm I think I think this I think the Fox people call him Trickster. Yeah. One of yeah, e either way, one of them calls him yeah. the gambler, one of them calls him the trickster. But the gambler, the thing about gambling is when we talk about our dopamine reward for it. So it, it, he he likes the chase, but when we talk about reward and how dopamine works, when the result is intermittent and random, we pull the lever more often. We go back to the works of B.F. Skinner, who <clears throat> was involved with Vegas as well as behavioral science, but and also in the uh, early workings of the internet. So for those that need to, you know, wonder about what the government had to do with that because he was hired by the government for that. But, uh, but he was the one with the rat studies. Uh, basically they pull a lever for a treat. And if they got the treat every time, they would pretty much pull it when they're hungry. And if they never got the treat, they stopped pulling it. But if the treat was random and they developed the equation for what the exact amount of random was, they would pull the lever all the time, whether they're hungry or not. And uh, slot machines, by the way. Uh, and he's the gambler. He likes to chase. The result isn't the goal. The result being random actually makes him addicted to the chase. Also, because it's not just a slot pull. It's that's why he likes cards. I mean, mm -hmm. he starts he starts with dice, but he really gets to like cards because and. I, I think he he uses this analogy in the the beginning of of uh, Shadow Rising, is that there's an element of horse trading to it that his dad taught him because his mm -hmm. dad wasn't an alcoholic degenerate, you assholes. So there's an element of horse trading to it that there's some skill here, there's some thinking involved where where I can get the best of, I can I can finish this puzzle you know in, in much the same way that Perrin likes those little blacksmith's puzzles which i always kind of envision as a rubik's cube you know he's just sitting there Perrin, messing with the little puzzle Perrin's a chess player 
Okay, Perrin's a chess player because mm. there is always ultimate control because you know every movement that can be on the board at any given time if you study it enough. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt is a poker player because there is an element of randomness. That's the this original game theorist, which is why probably why I love Matt so much and probably why I love game theory, studying game theory so much because the original game theorists were poker players. How much tit for tat is random and how much is pre-planned so it's uh, uh i got the wrong book up again uh, thinking in bets annie duke right she goes around and teaches corporations how to separate random events from things that you had 100 control over but you were ignoring and that is that's matt to a t when it comes to battle planning when it comes to his regular life what's random and what's 100% on my under my control. Now where Tavaren comes in is like you said, he gets up in a in a in a daze and just goes wandering. Well, then it becomes completely random. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. and we'll get to that next chapter. Uh because that there there's that and then we'll get uh <clears throat> Nynaeve and Land finally comes to a head. <laughs> um <laughs> which which uh I hadn't I hadn't really thought about before, but I was saying before we start recording that that parallels interestingly with Rand and Min, and you get that one after the other. So I think we'll want to talk about those together. So we'll do that next time. Yeah. So I'll wear this shirt again next time, by the way. So I'm not just not changing. I, I thought we were getting to Rand and Min. Here. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I, we have no idea what Rand's member is like, but his height actually <laughs> plays into some of this. And so we're going to speculate on some things. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll go into that. There's, there's in a, something of an oblique reference to Matt's uh, in this chapter. So anyway, well, there was with uh, Melindra too, wasn't it? Wasn't there? No, I thought it was in here where, uh, where, where someone makes a, a reference to his, if that's part of being Tavarin. Hmm. No, but I was I talking about that. the when she was talking about his height. Melinda oh. was talking about his height, but then she makes a euphemism in another way that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where when she's giving him a naked massage before going out to do naked battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, maiden oh. got a maiden. Yeah. All you right. Never... Well, we'll. Go ahead. We will see y'all next time for that. Yep. We'll see you next time. Tuesday will be another social episode. Uh, we're going to talk, talk, uh, fitness and then some relationship stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we somehow keep our wives, even though we're horrible. So, you know, yeah, yeah. it works. <laughs>